everyone. Today we're going to look at appending to a CSV file. So in the previous two videos we first wrote to it and then we read from it. Now we're going to append to a CSV file. What that means is add a row. We're going to just add one row to our CSV file. So uh, you can see I have some boilerplate set up here in my in my PyCharm, I have the imports that we're going to be using, the California station codes. These are National Weather Service station codes. Uh, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. But it's just different locations, right? So we got Long Beach right here, and we have Burbank right here. So these are these are National Weather Service codes that we're going to use later to pull live data from the National Weather Service. But for now, we're just going to randomly generate it. So to append to a CSV file, uh, we're going to build this append to CSV file method. Very similar in the spirit of the read and write. It's a little bit of a mix of the two, where we try, we catch all the exceptions, and we also uh, need to read from it, or we need to write to it. We're gonna we're gonna do very similar in, in both aspects. So let's get started. Uh, we're gonna do the with open. And we're going to use the CSV file name that we have right here. We're going to send that in as a per it's coming in as a parameter, uh, and then we have a default parameter here which says if it doesn't receive one, use this. Uh, then we say a, a for append. Earlier we did R for read, W for write. A is for append, and then we do this new line character just as a uh, precaution, and it tells tells Python uh, how to handle uh, to jump to the new line for different operating systems and so on and so forth. Uh, so this right here, this with block, everything inside of the indentation, this with block will open the file and close the file for us because everything inside that with block. So this is a very useful way to structure your code. And then you have this open statement with, which will open this file and then it creates this file object, the CSV file name. This file object is how we grab the file. Uh, and I believe I want to name this file. We have uh, file name right here. I don't want to override that. That's the file name. That's the string. This is the file object. This is the physical object that we're going to be working with. OK, and now we're going to do a writer here. So just like our write to CSV, we're going to write CSV writer. And then we're going to write to this file object that we just made right here. And that's all we need there. And then we're going to do the actual write. You can do write rows if you're receiving uh, a data. If you're receiving a list of data, you would do write rows. We're just going to write one row. And we'll call that, we're going to grab that from a parameter list here, data row. So that's everything you need to write to a row. Uh, but we also want to catch a few of the likely exceptions that will occur. Uh, the first one is file not found, and then there's just general exceptions when reading a file. So let's put everything here in a try block. Uh, we just indent this to put it inside our try block. And then we'll do two exceptions, uh, file not found exception, which is just a pretty standard one. And then another exception for more general CSV file errors. Maybe the file you're reading is incorrectly formatted, so on and so forth. So we'll just say an error occurred here. Pending, let's put a pending. And then it's an F string, so we can put in the CSV file name. And we can put the error that appeared. And then for file not found, we're just going to say file's not found. CSV file name is not found. That's everything we should need for our append method here. We take in these two arguments, the data row. This is uh, the individual data that we're taking in, and the CSV file name. If it doesn't, you don't need to call this parameter 
You don't need to send anything because it's a default parameter. So if you wanted, you could set up a default parameter, or this could just be, you could also just leave it like that. That would work just fine too. But then you would have to send in that data. So in the same spirit of writing the CSV, like in the previous video, we're going to create three different variables. It's going to be the time station, the timestamp, and the temperature. And then we're going to save all of that to our data entry. It's going to be station, timestamp, and temperature. And this matches the same format that we have in our CSV file. Remember, CSV files are very well structured. You need to follow this structure. You have three, you have three column values. You have three column names here. So you need to have three values on each entry. And then we have station, timestamp, temperature. So I'm doing station, timestamp, and temperature in the exact same order for the CSV file. Uh, just for our own sanity, we're going to print the data entry so that we can see what it looks like. And then we append to, we append this data entry to the CSV file, and then we say what our CSV file name is. I'm gonna copy the exact name here, just to avoid typos. And that's everything that you should need. Uh, let's grab some random data here. We're just gonna grab a random California station code. So that's what this random method from our import here. For our timestamp, we're going to use the date time import here. Date time now, and then we will format it with year, month, day, hour, minute. That's what all these placeholders are doing for us. Year, month, uh, percentage, Y, and the capitalization should matter too, so be wary of that if you're doing it. And the last thing we want to do is just create a random number. Random int between 0 and 40. Uh, this is Celsius, that's why we're seeing 0 and 40. That's what the National Weather Service uses. All right, that should work. Uh, let's take a look at our station here and then let's run our append we can see that 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 line 12 was just added this is what we have here we can append again append some more data line 13 was just added so that's all it takes to append to a CSV file uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video take care